Really happy to be here with Shweta Parmar. Uh, she is part of my group coaching program, and we've been friends for years. It feels like um, we've actually met each other in person several times in New York. And Shweta, wonderful to have you here. Thank you for doing this. Yeah, no, thank you for um, always sharing, you know, um, your spaces and yeah. engaging. <laughs> well, let's start with your intro. So folks who are watching or listening can have a sense of what you do. And we'll go from there. Yeah. So um, my name is Shweta Parmar. I'm the creatrix of Gutsier Living, which is digesting food, thoughts, and emotions for bold, intuitive living. And I facilitate seekers um, on the wellness and spiritual hamster wheel who are hopping from one modality to another, one course or certification to another um, to get the clarity and solutions that they deeply desire from their own experience um, with the eternal truths of Ayurveda and the ancient wisdoms. So specifically, um, what this looks like is I help create customized diet, lifestyle, and herbal plants. Um, to harmonize the neurohormonal enzymatic secretions in your mind and body temple um, for complete well-being and for higher consciousness. Beautiful, wonderful, yeah. And uh, so you are one of our um, the helpers in the in the coaching program, which means we're going to be doing these interviews several times this year, and people who are watching can see your progress along the way, all your learnings. And today, they're already, you've already, you know, you, the notes you sent me in advance, there are some great learnings there that I want. I feel like those watching will benefit from. So how shall we dive in? Should we just, uh, you know, whichever whichever idea you want to share first, and let's, let's go from there. Yeah, I think, um, you know, one of the things, you know, on this uh, solopreneur journey that I feel, or anyone kind of also more specifically coming into your um, field <laughs> in your learnings and courses um, is to just uh, embody like a deeper sense of self-honesty um, about kind of your one's own um, vision um, and capacity and stamina, because I think we're conditioned to just always be in comparison mode, right? Um, even though on the spiritual path, that's not what it's about. But that's just how in our limited minds and bodies, we're conditioned in that way. And so I always um, feel like, you know, kind of be like a baby, you know, they don't care. <laughs> They're just so spontaneous. Um there's no comparison. They cry when they want to cry. They poop when they want to poop. Um, they're just so present um, in their being, right, in that moment. And so I do feel like kind of um, starting off with something that may be apparent and simple, but I just like to, for myself, remind myself especially to just constantly be uh, um self-honest uh, with oneself um, and uh, which will then entail kind of right like oh am I going to take this course with George or not you know or will I even listen to this video or not because um, that's part of time and energy management um, because if we don't tighten up these kind of energy valves, um, then it can affect, right, our creativity, our passion, and so many different things. So that's mm -hmm. one of the things I find myself constantly reminding myself. Yeah. Um, and also as a caregiver to um, an elderly mother, you know, that's just something that's very real, that I have to, even more so than usual, be constantly assessing. Right, right. Thank you. Um, and of course, I always I say the word too much authenticity. <laughs> right? It's essentially what you're talking about, like to be to be real with our sense of like our stamina, our boundaries, um, how we're structuring our day and time. And, and if we are honest, uh, and authentic, um, the question of whether to watch George's courses or videos should always be yes. You know, no, I'm kidding. No, um, <laughs> no, 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 no. I, it is. I, I agree that we have to. We have to. Be, so, tell, tell me more. What you, what else? What other aspects of, um, 
sort of self-honesty you think is is important to you know kind of growing your authentic business yeah you know it's just kind of like you know what is true to um you know yourself you know do I really want to show up to George's call or not and that's okay if you don't <laughs> and giving yourself permission to just honor what you're feeling and I, I love rebels so <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> so um so I think you know that's part of it and then also um even like any of your anyone's teachings right if that's uh the resonance um is resonant for oneself or not um you know and then or tweaking it right um tweaking it pivoting in a technique or teaching that you share um, so that it's helpful for you and it's not overwhelming. Mm. Yeah. And another thing you um, you kind of focus on is just, well, your modality, your, your healing is about the integration. And, uh, you know, something you've, you've wrote in the notes to me is like about, you can't separate your health and your soul calling. Like, talk about that. What do you mean by that? And how yeah. does that re relate to our, our work, you know, our business? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, being authentic is being whole, right? And so here, you know, what I see, um, you know, in my own journey or constantly see in, you know, in our, a lot of different communities, we're trying to um, build an authentic business then literally at a chemical level and as a uh, eastern medicine practitioner the basic things if your um neuros the your hormones and enzymes etc aren't secreting properly and syncing up um, properly then um, it's going to be difficult to find the joy or more challenging to find the joy and then you could apply or learn whatever techniques um, at this external way but in your mind and body temple if this matrix um, within these rhythms right just like in your work you focus on rhythms right rhythm of consistent content creation so here we, in my world, uh, which is about the inner world, um, how did these um, rhythms of nature or circadian rhythms, which is commonly more familiar to people, um, manifest and how different enzymes and hormones are secreting, which can give you, um, you know, more health and more clarity um, in one's life, et cetera. So that is a big um, factor because how can you be authentic if you're not feeling well, right? Or um, in flow um, and thing, you know, et cetera. So, or energy levels, right? So those things you, and then you have to get your own clarity, right? Your own insights into your own journey. So, um, having daily habits in Ayurveda, we really focus a lot on daily habits that support good gut health, uh, which is a, where the transformation energy lives. So if you want to transform any kind of stuckness into more movement or flow, or you want to transform a state of being or a state of something, then, um, that energy has to um, be catered to and focused on. So that's um, kind of like what I, in the inner world of rhythms, right? So focusing on these rhythms is really a critical part in, um, in, in your external uh, business um, building world. So um, that, that's kind of where the bridge and the union has to happen more. So one can talk about self-care and health and other things, but um, it, it just, it becomes these two th separate things in our, in our thinking and our living um, versus kind of this more integrated and union, you know, um, union practice. So, yeah, 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 totally. Yeah. I, I agree. Like the rhythms, are 
I, I think it's more important than people realize. Like, um, so how, and, and so this is interesting with authentic rhythms. Like, here's a question that I have for you and you can share from your experience. Um, how do we respect our, um, our just normal feelings versus, um, I guess, try to like live into a structure that we create for ourselves. So, you know what I mean? Like there's, there's um, like, because part of the, part of health means to be aware of, to become sensitive, right? To one's state and one's like bodily rhythms. And at the same time, we also need to, um, if we want to have a business and be consistently um, serving our audience, uh, we need to have a structure. So like, talk about that a little bit. Like, what have you discovered in integrating these two? Yeah. And so, um, again, in Ayurveda, health is, if you're not happy, you're not healthy. It's kind of actually boils down to that. So um, what is, uh, then what are those practices that you may have to do to recalibrate the five elemental and these three bio energies that we work with in our mind and body? And so structure could look different um, for who you are. You're leading not from an external um, mind created structure, but you're leading from the inside out. So for example, somebody who is more air and space dominated um, element, they may require another structure that's more productive for them versus somebody um, like yourself, who is a little bit more fire dominated and earthy, where Excel spreadsheets come very easy to you. And that comes naturally, right? So that structure works for you. So there's no right or wrong structure when it comes to the ancient wisdoms. There's no right and wrong at the end of the day. It's really like seeing like, okay, who am I? That existential question. Um, and then according to that, what is working, what structure will make me feel more natural in it, in that way. So it's not about, um, uh, it's, you have, you need containers, right? Like you need some sense of direction, maybe another word for a structure or something, but now like assessing kind of like, Hey, what are my natural tendencies here? And how am I going to create this business model or my joyful productivity schedule that's going to uh, fit be fit for kind of who I am mm -hmm. yeah, according, no, that's, to, that's according to yeah these natural elements because that's the truth you can't deny nature's truth <laughs> mm -hmm. that's not negotiable that's you yeah cannot yeah. deny its and energy it's, so what might it look like for like you said if there was a air space more uh, or air um yeah uh, air, and space. air and space right so so for someone who's more like that what would you imagine how how what what guidance might you offer for how they might structure their days or yeah the way they operate themselves yeah and so um one method is, for example, looking at the bio clock um, of the day. Um, when I look at a clock, it's not just numbers. Um, and it's about kind of what energies are dominant in that. So uh, in Ayurveda and a lot of um, natural sciences, we apply the law of opposites. And so one of the reasons, for example, I think a lot of your um, students um, happen to be creatives and healers. Um, and they tend to be more air and space dominated because you share that grounding and focused fire energy, which helps to balance off their energy, right? Because at the end of the day, we're all connected. <laughs> and so the kind of dance that's happening here in like who you're attracting naturally is happening because that's what they need, right? Because their natural state might be air and space. And again, this is... A, generalization we're, we're all five elements um and then here they're attracted to your systems because that's self 
And so they can, one action, they that's why they are taking your courses. And then to kind of um, look at, let's say, a joyful productivity of like a practice of CCC, um, categorizing, give structure and a label, right? Which brings from this elusive, floaty thing to like, let's ground it in a label on your calendar, you know, or something like that. And so that's one thing that grounds um, and balances off that elemental energy. And it's very hard to understand a lot of times because this is not normal talk or the way people think, right? Um, looking at the bio clock, as I started to share, there are times during the day where that earth element is more dominant. Um, in the early morning time. So that's maybe something where you might want to focus on doing some of your work where the grounding energy is, you feel more present in your mind and body and helps to better focus during those times. And again, it's such a vast science. Um, and again, it's a workshop in itself. So. <laughs> yeah, no, it's good to hear kind of the the initial thoughts on this. It's, it's really interesting and yeah. Maybe you could do a workshop on that at some point. Um, okay. I want to just at least uh, get into talking more about your priorities and your offer. Um, and then we can circle back around to other things too. But um, just thinking ahead in the next few months before we check in again on another interview like this, like what what would, what would are you working on? Uh, what's important for you and your business? Yeah. And so like I started to share, you know, it's a union of like the rhythms um, that I have in my uh, personal practice for my spiritual and personal health, you know, um, care is then really uh, applying it um, to my business practices. So it should come second nature, almost like you know, we don't think about charging our phone or our laptops these days, right? I mean, it's just not something you think about, you just do it. Um, and so similarly, my aim and priority is to have a consistent rhythm um, of content as, and I'm excited about the new Soul Gym um, content program that you just launched today, actually, right? So, um, and so really um, share my unique uh, point of view when it comes to Ayurveda, make it really uh, practical for folks, which is, um, you know, uh, really hard to understand or restrictive, which is how I think people perceive what Ayurveda is. Um, also, um, I find um, there's so much new agey, um, trendy energy happening in the Ayurveda yoga world. And I want, I'm going to be grounding it back into its truths <laughs> and how it could be easily applied more. And some of that will be also sharing more um, courageously, living my brand more of gutsy living, right? Of being bold on podcasts and sharing with ideal hubs um, and collaborators, et cetera. And the third thing is um, uh, launching unique body of work of subconscious repatterning for babies before the womb, in the womb, and after the womb. Uh, oftentimes we think of subconscious patterning. Oftentimes adults start to address it in their adulthood, 30s, 40s, 50s onwards. And this is what um, con uh, conscious parenting can look like so that we're setting up a strong foundation for our babies and our children to deal with life's challenges and make the right choices for their own soul journey later on in life. Mm, awesome. Yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> that sounds exciting and really, um, yeah, crucial work for, for people very like visionary forward thinking, of course, because they're already helping their, their, um, the baby's future, you know, uh, from the earliest part. Um, and so tell us about your current offers. Yeah. And so, um, you know, currently I do a lot of um, uh, kind of single, uh, I work one-on-one -on -one mostly. So it, that looks like having a, a one-time consultation, which is, you know, not something I totally focus on because the habit change, as you know, takes time. Um, so 
I do single consultations, 21 day and 45 day programs, where again, as I was sharing before, we focus on how do we recalibrate these rhythmic enzyme and hormone secretions through of the body and mind so that um, things can sync up better so that we see the results uh, not just for our health, but then also in our lives because that vibration then will also spill out um, into other life changes that we have no control over, but that's just kind of how things work in life, right? Like things start to ripple effect. Um, so um, those are some of my current offerings. Um, and uh, this second offering is the mom of the baby subconscious reprogramming um, consultations that I do for pregnant and new families as well. So I've been doing that work. It's just that when I said one of the priorities is just launching it in more education webinar form, you know, this spring by the spring more. So yay, yeah. that's great. And uh, <laughs> so of course I'll have the links to your uh, you know social media, et cetera, below. People can follow it. And look forward to, you know, con learning more from you on your journey. Um, yeah. What Thank else? You anything so else you want to? What's that? Thank you so much for your support, yeah, you know, and yeah. all your teachings. It's yeah. a, such a huge part of um, bringing some of this work more out. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> and thanks for showing up and for others in the community, too. Um, anything else you want to share before we complete? Today? Yeah, I think uh, I think just overall, you know, one of the key things uh, for your programs or for a lot of our uh, community members is just to kind of, um, you know, be natural, you know, um, like uh, just as you said, like no expectations, you know, I know you are, you like the Bhagavad Gita a lot, and that's a crucial text that in our Vedas or in the, my spirituality that we follow is this you know, just deconditioning ourselves from no agenda, no attachments and no expectations and just kind of being and stuff. So I look forward to, yeah, that embodying more of that ex experimentation energy that you also, you know, are talking more and more about and doing yourself as well. So, yeah, I, think I like it's that. Just, yeah. It's a huge part of like just being alive, right? Mm -hmm. Like, um, and just... And it brings so much life and freshness um, into mm -hmm. anything we do versus like, oh, let me think about this or uh, yeah. it can cause a little bit more stagnation or blockage or something mm. in that way. Yeah. yeah, no, it's good. Mm -hmm. I, I'm kind of full circle for me as you're talking about this non-attachment and experimentation because back to the rhythms that you started with, that's what we're creating a rhythm for, you know, rhythm yeah. for experimentation without attachment knowing that as we keep on that rhythm you know with our content with our offers things naturally grow and we observe where it grows we'll nurture it more but yes non-attachment that's good that's good yeah. yeah and just allowing that that non-attachment i think allows that um that akash, the air and space element to grow right that spaciousness to um also at the end of the day, we don't control anything. So something that we may not think, like right now, my when you ask me that question of what is one of some of your priorities, for, but I'm like in the process of the doing, something else might birth. I don't know, right? Like um, I can be like, hey, I want to launch um, this more publicly, the subconscious repatterning work, but I'm also staying open to maybe something else arising in the process. Um, and maybe that's, that's what it was supposed to be, right? Versus maybe it wasn't about the launch of the repatterning work and stuff. So yeah, that's great. You know, great example. So, yeah, so yeah. I think the message is just like staying really open mm -hmm. uh, as you take the action, right? Um, that's the important part. Keep taking the action um, and then be at the same time open to what may arise. That's totally out of your limited, <laughs> limited right. mind. And, yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, thinking, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, well, thank you, Shweta, for sharing of yourself today and uh, with your clients, audience, and with the community members and the program. So thanks for all that you do. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.